In the last session, we learned about the limitations of traditional distributed networks. Moving forward, we're going to discuss the solution to these problems, SDN. Let's first explain how SDN was created. Software Defined Networking, or SDN, was developed by the Clean Slate program at Stanford University as an innovative network architecture. When those Stanford researchers first came up with SDN, there were a few issues that they wanted to solve. The network in their lab, at the time, had switches from different vendors running on it. And each vendor's devices had different configurations and features. Dealing with these differences was a lot of trouble. Due to security considerations, it was also necessary to customize network forwarding paths. But because the control plane of the network was distributed among all of its devices, this customization was not easy. The researchers at Stanford wanted to separate the control plane from network devices and centralize it in the form of a controller. They also wanted a uniform, standardized way to directly and flexibly control forwarding paths on the devices of different vendors. These issues were what initially led them to create the concept of SDN forwarding control separation and the open flow protocol. But what exactly is SDN? The concept is rather vague, meaning different things to different people. Given the variety of discordant opinions and the many connotations of SDN, let's take an in-depth look into its name. The S for software, is usually understood as a centrally deployed network controller, though some claim that it refers to the upper layer service applications. D, for defined, has had its meaning extended to influenced or controlled. And N, for network, is sometimes defined as network forwarding, sometimes as network configuration provisioning, and sometimes as network security policy. As we can see, the imprecise definition of the word has led to differences in understanding. So how are we supposed to understand SDN? Let's start with the basics. Open flow, a core SDN technology, separates the control plane from the forwarding plane so that the network traffic can be controlled more flexibly. These are the two most basic parts of SDN, forwarding control separation and the open flow protocol that implements SDN. There is another technology that developed alongside SDN, Network Functions Virtualization, or NFV. People who work in SDN think of NFV as one component of SDN, a key step in virtualizing the features on layers 4 through 7. But those who work in NFV consider it to be a form of technology developing concurrently with or even surpassing SDN. Traditional telecom devices have special hardware for each different NE. Many network functions, BRAS, NAT, Firewall, IDS, DNS, SGSN and GGSN, for example, are implemented through independent hardware. On traditional networks, hardware and software are closely coupled and are not versatile. NFV, on the other hand, uses standard x86 servers and generalized storage and switching devices. Software and hardware are decoupled, and the NE functions that once required specialized hardware are virtually implemented through software on x86 servers. This makes management and maintenance more efficient and the system more flexible. To clarify the relationship between SDN and NFV, let's use hailing a cab as an analogy. Traditional networks are like standing on the sidewalk waiting for a cab to come by. After a cab arrives, you get in, tell the driver your destination, and he comes up with a route to get there. The driver makes these decisions on his own, like a router with its own control and forwarding planes. Consider calling a cab by telephone. You make a reservation, and the taxi company dispatches a nearby cab to proceed to your location. This is the first step towards SDN, the taxi company, 
like the network controller, centralizes scheduling. Now consider using an app to call a cab. The app not only centralizes dispatch, but also computes a route for the driver based on current traffic. All the driver needs to do is follow the planned route. This is the second step towards SDN. Control and forwarding are separated. SDN brings networks under control just as taxi apps bring order to hailing a cab. NFV, to take the analogy further, is like Uber. Uber connects passengers not with official licensed cabs, but with private individuals who drive their own cars. Likewise, NFV eliminates the need to implement network functions on specialized hardware. In this way, NFV makes networks open and allows anyone to participate. Moving forward, let's discuss the essential differences between SDN and NFV and how the two technologies are related. SDN is an innovation in network architecture that centralizes the control plane of the network. It does not change network functions, but restructures the network architecture. In contrast, NFV is an innovation in network form that decouples software and hardware. NFV also does not change network functions themselves. It changes the form in which they are implemented. SDN and NFV benefit each other, but are not mutually dependent. That is, NFV can be deployed to virtualize functions on a non-SDN network, and SDN can be introduced to a network without implementing NFV.